Solar generators and power stations can do so many different things so well. But what if an advanced member of this high-tech society was out in the woods and needed to start a simple fire to keep from freezing? There is no smartphone app to do that. They'd be too smart to rub two sticks together and they don't have a lighter. And who needs to carry matches anyway? Those are from the past century. Here's today's test subject. I've had this thing for a while. It's my Vitamin Jump 1800. It still works, hopefully even after today. Now to me the most obvious solution to a DC fire starting is to find a piece of thin wire or nichrome and just short that out on the DC jack, being careful not to overload it. You could find nichrome in a junkyard or in an old car by the side of the road, but I chose a piece of scrap nichrome wire for this experiment. As you know, this channel has an exemplary safety record, until today. I just chopped off the supplied 12 volt outlet cord and clipped onto that. To make a fire starter, I took the scrap nichrome wire and wound it into a coil shape. Not pretty, but I think it will work. I am trying to get it hot without frying the 12 volt outlet on the Jump 1800. Now I wrap that nichrome in a piece of fairly dry tissue paper, but paper towel, bark shavings, dry moss, or any kind of dry tinder should pretty much work. Now a couple of alligator clips and let's see what happens. Can I start a fire? Part of being prepared is to know the alternatives. I thought I might be able to start a fire with this thing, but now I know that I can. On this channel, we always want you to learn something when you watch the videos. Here's a little bit of extra knowledge for those who are still watching. Survival is actually a calories game, and calories are equal to heat. The human body has to burn through its own energy reserves just to stay warm, or survive. In a cold weather survival scenario, if you can find a way to get some heat into your body, you will actually reduce the amount of calories your body is forced to burn in order to stay warm and stay alive. So if you take food and you heat it up and then you consume the food, you're helping your body stay warm from the inside out. This is an old trick. People used to drink hot water, hot tea, hot coffee when they came in from the snow and ice in order to warm their bodies up from the inside out. If you're trying to recover from getting too cold for too long, consuming hot beverages or hot food will actually speed up the recovery process. So when you think about it, even though a solar generator is not food and you can't eat it, you can use it to heat up your food if you have the necessary cooking devices available to you. Of course, in the old days, they would just start a campfire and heat their food up. To me, this is rather interesting and thought-provoking. I think that a fusion of technology and survival skills can be very useful. You should still know the old ways, but mixing the two together can be very useful. Many of us will never face a true survival scenario, but it pays to be prepared. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you found this information useful. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to support my work, please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.